So follow me now and let's go around and talk about the various paintings on these walls. Talk about our ancestors, those that um, kept the faith and um, believed and just knew that somehow things would be all right. So let's go on this beautiful journey and remember those things that we do not want to forget. You know, quilting was, um, it's an art, and the old people used to just whatever material they could find. Uh, uh, we used to have in those days like rice sack, flour sack, and they would keep the material. And uh, what dresses they didn't make for you, they would keep the scraps uh, left over to make quilts. And so this quilt reminds me so much of probably one like uh, my great-grandmother would make. And um, they would make the quilt, put the patches together, and find an old, old piece, maybe an overcoat or something heavy um, like that that you didn't use no more. And they would put the quilt over that, put that heavy piece of um, uh, coat or something in between and make the front and the back of the quilts. And man, and I tell you, in the wintertime when it got real cold, oh, the children, because you know, in those days, the cabin, the, you would hear the air whistling through the old house. I know my great-grandmother in the wintertime just had a big fireplace and not much more than that. But making the quilt was something she did in the spare time. And I believe sometimes they got together with other women when they had time. I see this one is really printed out like in a, uh, maybe an old newspaper print, um, something that you found, but the artist painted it in the clothing. You would stand to the line and talk to the neighbor across to the next yard. Certainly you see here too a quilt that has been made and um, the young women here hanging up the clothes with a, a lot of stories on those clothes. So this was done all over, I'm sure, the low country because very few people had, back in them days, a washing machine, if they had one, they had one of those old agitator ones that went, you know, swish, swish back and forth. Growing up, now when we were children, certainly um, we would have our hair, what you call rop, they old people used to rop it with the threads um, and your hair to make your hair grow. And like this little girl, hers is, um, perfectly long and now the children have the different color rubber band and bows in the hair. But looking in the mirror was certainly something as a child growing up we all kind of like to do growing up to see you know how things change and um, back in the days when your mother got a, 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 a bedroom set probably um, and had a mirror on it, it was something amazing coming in the house. This young lady, though, has a great future. She's looking into the future, looking at herself, to probably dreaming about becoming um, uh, either a doctor, maybe a lawyer, and uh, an artist herself, becoming a fine young lady, looking in the mirror. Mm -hmm. As the Philip Simmons was well known in the Charleston area, for all the beautiful iron gate work that he did. Knew Mr. Simmons well, um, always would see him in passing, he was always such an humble person. Um, it was a great pleasure to talk to him, and now it's a great pleasure to visit some of his historical gates. You could come to Charleston and see some beautiful gate and artwork that Mr. Simmons just um, visualize it out of his head and would make the design of the gates. No pattern, just of, uh, visualizing from his head what he wanted that gate to look like. But certainly if you come to Charleston, this is one of the things you don't want to miss, is to go in downtown Charleston and to visit the Philip Simmons gates of Charleston. Here in Charleston, South Carolina, you can find unique sweet grass basket. And this painting is showing a young lady getting ready to start out probably her basket. By the end of the basket, um, there will be a beautiful basket probably with a handle. Maybe she's getting ready to do um, 
a fanna uh, basket, one that's just round, um, old fanna basket. But certainly in Charleston, over in the Mount Pleasant area, this is the art that our ancestors left uh, in that area. Usually if you learn how to do this art work, I call it art, you would learn it from somebody in the Mount Pleasant, from the Mount Pleasant area. And that is where it is specialized between the men and women over there in Mount Pleasant. Beautiful baskets. And this is just giving you a sample of how they start off weaving whatever it will turn out to be. Come to Charleston. Go down to the market area, down to Broad and Meeting Street and different uh, sites of Charleston and you'll see men and women sewing the sweet grass basket. Beautiful art, one that has been left by the ancestors. And look like mom and pop is out gathering, um, getting ready to gather some of those good old oysters. Oysters certainly in South Carolina and low country, um, very good um, to eat. And uh, on low tide they are gathering oysters, they look like, and then the pop got a, quite a few already in the boat and she's um, um, picking out some here because it grows in a cluster and so they go out to get them off of the clusters, off of the bed. Now here in, in Charleston in the South Carolina, we eat oysters in the months that have the aura in them, not the ones without the aura. Now why is that? Well, we always learn from children growing up and that's what um, Panda taught us to eat them in the aura months because you give the oysters the time to grow the beds and to get full and succulent so when it's time to um, harvest them and eat them. And so that's one of the reasons why and they're full in those months, really good. Have you come to Charleston and they gather them on James Island, they gather them on John's Island and they're real good and sweet on Eddisto Island, all the surrounding islands in Charleston uh, where they gather oysters when it's the seasonal time for them. They're very good. Um, going down fishing and got old Duke where I'm going to. The Duke is watching the, the little streams going down to the creek. They're going down, we sit down to the creek, going to the creek. Going down and catch a few fish and, and maybe a little bit of shrimp. Uh, he'll have, um, and the dog um, is going along on the trail. Remind me of a little old story I heard one time. They were saying the dog was looking and going across the pond. He looked in the water and saw his shadow, but he thought it was another dog, and he started barking. Woo, woo. said, no, Duke, that's nobody else. That's you. Come on, let's go, Duke, because we got to go fishing. So um, Pa and Duke, his buddy, man's best friend, going down to the fishing pond. In the background, I see it looks like the barn, nice barn back there um, on the farm. Uh, maybe sometime to keep the, uh, the wagon. Could be one of those old time wagon houses sitting there. But Duke is very interested in going um, down to the fishing hole with Pat because it looked like they're ready to go. Right behind me, um, there's a beautiful uh, net, old time net hanging right here. It was one that was made many, many years ago. Um, and this is what the older men usually would sit on and make, the uh, shrimping net. You don't find many of those anymore, but certainly on this display here is one by Mr. Joseph Legree, Jr., a fishing net. Oh, my daddy used to make them, sit in the little store, and he would have his uh, needle and make the old time fishing nets. This reminds me so much of the ones daddy would make. On James Island, um, the men on Solid Green and all those places, many of them now gone on. You can't hardly find that art anymore of natural making the nets. But certainly this one remind me and take me way back to when my father used to make them. And there's still maybe a few older men on the island, but a lot of them are gone on home now. Here you got some young ladies that got their pole and trying to catch a little few fishes here. And this guy uh, trying to put the bucket down to catch some fresh crabs. And what they would do, 
um, soon as you catch those fresh crab right on the creek, man, you'd go and take them up in the old boathouse restaurant and cook them right there and eat them. There was an old man on James Island. Um, that's all he used to do down at the Mosquito Beach area. Old man. Um, he would cook crabs and everybody knew him for doing that. Yeah, wasn't much of a restaurant, but it certainly was a gathering place that all would go to enjoy uh, those crabs. Boathouse restaurant, yeah, really good. Remind, take you way back. They catch them right then, uh, they catch it then, and cook it then, and then you eat it then. Yeah, big crab crack, fresh seafood, fresh out the river. And that was when I was growing up, remember it well. Mm-hmm, yes. Remember it well, fresh, early in the morning, four day clean. Yeah, this painting, um, um, going to the church down there, looked like uh, out maybe in the country, but it reminds me of um, what we call big meeting time, going to the church certain time of year over to Savannah Creek, way back in um, Earhart, South Carolina. Um, everybody would come. Uh, dress for the big meeting, and then everybody would come with the wagon. Um, Grandpa Adam had the wagon and the horse because you brought the food. So when the service was over, uh, you would, everybody would come out under the trees near the graveyard too and have um, big eating, big meeting time. So these ladies look like they're dressed for the occasion, all white. Maybe we're going to have a um, christening today of a baby. Um, that they're all white and, and the children. I can remember on the first Sundays, um, women back in those days would not be caught without wearing white on Sunday. They don't do it very much anymore, but back in the days, that's what they did. So getting ready, having the big meeting service, and when that service is over, then everyone comes out in the, in the yard and have um, good old food, some cultures we still have that. Uh, hope that it never die, that families will continue to um, greet and meet one another. And there it has a lot of history around this one also. Um, history that has passed and gone, but something that we can probably never forget. Black church reaches the south. Uh, meeting uh, in Charleston, you know, they talked about the uprising at Emmanuel and all those priests. It's, our ancestors came a long way, but the church was one place that we had great um, faith, strength, and a lot of courage to continue doing what we even doing today. Amen. We know that some of our ancestors have walked right off the wall and are right here with us at this very moment. Thank you.